We've been reporting on a magnitude 8.0 earthquake that struck the South Pacific last night. Experts were surprised by the massive quakes that hit Indonesia in 2004 and Japan in 2011. Now, a new prediction model could change the thinking behind so-called superquakes. Physics professor Michio Kaku of City University of New York is here. Welcome. Welcome. Mm -hmm. So what is the new model and how significant is it? Well, this affects the 9.0 monster earthquake that has a thousand times more energy than what rocked the Solomon Islands just yesterday. We're talking about the 800-pound gorilla of earthquakes. And we now realize that by rights, they shouldn't exist. When a small earthquake takes place, it dissipates the energy. So we shouldn't have 9.0s, which, which devastated Fukushima. By rights, they shouldn't exist. But now we realize that a fault line could be like a battery, accumulating energy across many cycles and this is a game changer. It means that we may have to rewrite all the textbooks on earthquakes. So you're saying we could predict these? No, it means that it's even more unpredictable because it means that even an innocent fault off the coast of Fukushima can sustain a 9.0 monster quake when by rights there should not be a 9.0. So it means that in some sense we're back to the dark ages uh, realizing that even on off, coast, off the coast of the United States even an innocent fault may sustain the monster 9.0. Based on this new theory, could any of these superquakes occur in the United States? One possibility is the Cascadia Fault off the coast of Seattle, Portland, in the Pacific Northwest. It sustained monster earthquakes before, and it means that they could be unpredictable, building up energy even when we don't know that there's a battery there storing the energy about to be released on the Pacific Northwest. Also, the siting of nuclear power plants. It means that if a nuclear power plant is near a fault, line and the fault line seems to be innocent mm -hmm. you could actually be storing up energy over many cycles I thought you were gonna come here and make us feel better about earthquakes <laughs> well it's humbling realizing that mother nature has a lot of tricks up her sleeve yeah. and we're just beginning to tease apart the how the mechanics of earthquakes but earthquake prediction unfortunately is still hocus-pocus uh, the 8.0 magnitude earthquake off the Solomon Islands set off a tsunami we have an animation of tsunami following uh, how do you know when a tsunami is going to form? Well, we're not positive, but we think that when you have a subduction fault, that is one fault slips underneath the other fault. Mm -hmm. It means that part of the, the seafloor falls, the other part rises, and the mismatch causes the sea levels to rise a few feet. That doesn't sound like much, a few feet. However, it's spread out over hundreds of miles. The energy is so great that it actually affects the orbit of the Earth around the sun. Mm -hmm. It actually affects how many seconds there are in a given day. It actually affects the geometry of the planet Earth itself. And if you had to look anywhere in the world and try and predict where there might be another magna earthquake or super earthquake as you call them, where are you most concerned about? Well, we are worried about perhaps a Tokyo earthquake because the Fukushima fault is actually disconnected from the fault near Tokyo. Also, we have to worry about Tehran, and of course, we have to worry about San Francisco, Los Angeles. Uh, we have to realize that the ground under your feet is not as stable as you think it is. Professor Kaku, thank you. We appreciate it. And it is now 744. Time now for your local weather.